please join me for our gospel, which is written on, based on 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 to 31. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this is the world in its present form. This world in its present form is passing away. May God add this blessing to the reading of this word. Pastor Ishmael, thank you for sharing your word with us. I ask God's blessing upon your sermon and give us open ears and open hearts to receive your message. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. I thank God this morning for each and every one of you, and I want to welcome you all together with us who are watching from Facebook uh, this morning. Today, we are talking about time. And it's Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, And at this time, the church of Corinth had so many challenges. You know, it is a church in town, and they had uh, a challenge of women who were single mothers, who are prostitutes, who are, and so many things that were happening in the church, and they could not differentiate things of outside the church and what is supposed to uh, be in, uh, in the church. And Paul is trying to tell them, hey, stop fighting, because women even used to come and fight for men in church and all that. And Paul is telling them, this is not right. This is not the right thing to do. You people of Corinth, you are so much, you are wasting a lot of time Thinking about the worldly things. Thinking about the issue of things that happen in the world. And he is reminding them, hey, come on, brothers and sisters. We come here to church not to fight, not to look for friendship, not not to look for fame. But we come here to prepare our hearts, to prepare our lives for eternity. And he is reminding them that Christ leans, not about these other things they are thinking about because these things are temporary. Marriage is temporary. Though Paul is not saying that marriage is not important, it is important. Paul is not saying even though those who are married to be able like they are not, it does not mean that Marriage should not be respected. It should be respected. But it should not be the point of our lives. And he is going on and telling them, hey, do not complicate your lives unnecessarily. Hey, pastor, this this woman came last night. He snatched my, he, she has snatched my husband. Oh, pastor, uh, I, can't come to church because my children are not in school because I don't have fees. Hey, pastor, I can't do because of this. Hey, pastor, I am not coming because I'm rejoicing. My daughter is getting married. My son is getting married. And Paul is telling them, yes, it is good to celebrate all these things. It is good to mourn. But don't mourn forever. Don't celebrate forever. 
Don't always think about your husband and your children forever. Even them, one day they will go. Even you, you will go. There is no time to waste. Paul is reminding the Christians that a day has only 24 hours. But sometimes we behave like if our Christian time is 26 hours and the worldly time is 24 hours. And Paul is reminding them, remember, within those 24 hours, you have to do all these things, but do them for the Lord. Do all what you are doing. Rejoice with the picture of the kingdom. Rejoice knowing that you will not be in this uh, rejoicing time forever. Mourn as if you know that tomorrow you will not be mourning because time is still going. So, brothers and sisters, what Paul is trying to point out here is our days are numbered. We are only in this world. The Bible says in Psalm 19 that it's only 70 years. And you don't know how God calculates or how God does his math. Because he says, he says, a thousand days before him is just like a day. And one day before him is like a thousand days. So, if we are to calculate the 70 years, you may think that it's a long time for you to live and do what you want to do. But who tells you that you get the 70 years that depends or it's according to your own math? Paul is telling them, or telling us, or the word of God is telling us this morning that our days are numbered. We have a specific time to live. We are not living here forever. I remember one of the Southern Gospel songs that says, This world is not my home. I just are passing through. My treasures are read up somewhere beyond the blue. The ages beckon me from heavens upon door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. This world is so nice. It has so many things to enjoy. But the Lord is reminding us that this morning that we should live in this world as though we are passing by. We are just passing. This is not our home. And that's what Paul is trying to tell the Corinthians. Or oh, they ask this, that this world is temporary. We only deserve, it only deserves a secondary attention. It does not mean that we should not educate our children. We will do that. We will rear up our children. We will take care of our husband and our wives. We will do all that. But as so, as so, we are passing. As so, we are not doing it permanently. We are not here. Rather, as Christians, we should change our attitude and do whatever we are doing, not for ourselves, but for others. We add whatever we do, we do it not purposely to praise us, but to praise God. Not to praise ourselves. Many a times is when we do things that praise ourselves and we do them like we will be there forever. We need to maintain as Christians. Paul is talking about the end time, eschatological times. The end times, when Jesus is coming, when Jesus will come. And Jesus himself saying that nobody knows when I will come. It's only the Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, let us not be so much into the world and forget that time is going on. The clock is ticking. And we only need to know that yes, 
You are my lovely wife. You are my lovely husband. You are my lovely children. You are my lovely members of the church. But I am not here to stay. We are not to live forever. When planning to serve the God's people, even if it's prayer, pray like you are dying the next minute. But don't keep on praying forever. Yes, there is time for everything. There is time to pray. There is time to sing. There is time. All this we need to know that if you love singing, sing to praise the Lord. If you are a preacher, preach about the kingdom and tell people that the kingdom of God is there. And we are all members of the kingdom. If only we repent. When Paul is talking about the world is passing away, he is not saying it's tomorrow. And he is not saying it's not the next minute. What he paid or what he want us to know is that we don't know. What all we know is that eternity is permanent. Or what we know is that those who will repent and those who will live in this world as so they are not of this world will live in eternity. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is real. The coming of Jesus is real. He is coming any time. You find people are fighting to live in this world. People are fighting for them. They fighting for power. People are fighting to get more money. I want to remind you that this morning, it is going to have a lot of money. But then remember that this money, this life of that money, will come to an end. It is good for us to have property, but then behave like you possess nothing. That's what Paul is telling us this morning. That yes, it is true, you have all whatever you have, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you live in this world forever. All this will come to an end. But the word of God shall only live. It is only what Jesus says, what the Bible says, that is permanent. As long as the Bible does not say, The Bible does not say, then it will pass away. The word of God will remain. Everything else will pass away. Marriages will end. Parenthood will end. The word of God will remain. The love of God will remain. It is not like the love of people who decides that I can love him for now. And tomorrow, you change your mind and say, I don't love you. Jesus says, or God says, I love you, my children. I created you. And the love will remain. And therefore, the kingdom of God will remain. If we can maintain that kind of perspective, it will buy us a great deal of freedom. Whatever I'm doing here, I'm just doing it for the Lord or for my people. But I know I am passing. I am doing it for the Lord. I am doing it for other people to know God. As a church, whatever we are doing, whether it's Bible study, whether it's women group, whether it's singing, whether it's preaching, Are we doing it for ourselves or for others? Even when we are beautifying the places that we stay, planting trees, planting flowers, just do it. Yes, it's beautiful. It's you. You you are happy to see that. 
But then again, do it knowing that you are not beautifying this place for yourself to remain forever, but for others to come and say, there lived these people as members of the church. Whatever we are doing, let us do it to praise God so that others, when they come, they will say, here lived people of God. There lived people of God. I want to remind you that we are here awaiting for full revelation. But time is not on our side. It is time to make peace with one another. It is time to show other people genuine love. Give your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your, your spouse, your child, a genuine smile. Give other people a chance to rejoice and see the reason for them to continue praising the Lord. For them to continue being happy. It is very difficult sometimes because when Paul is saying mourn as if you are not, it's not easy. But then what does he mean? What he means is that Jesus is coming. Prepare yourself. Accept the normal life. These days, it is very difficult. It is becoming very difficult in this world even to know the word of God. Every time you go to social media, any time you go to the, to, you look at the news, you find, oh, even the greatest preachers have scandals and people are like, if he is doing this, then there is no God. It's not about them. The relationship of God being a member of the kingdom is not about your pastor. It's not about the preacher. It's about you. It's about your relation with God. Your relationship with God. It's not about what your friends are doing. You did not come to church because your friend comes here. I did not come to church because mass is coming. But I am going to church because I have a relationship with my God. These days, even church, it's about where does my friends go to church? Oh, where do you go to church? Lake Hen. Oh my goodness, that's where I will be going. Because you are there. It is good to be with your friends as you worship. But then don't worship your friends. Don't worship that pastor. Worship the Lord. Worship the king. Let us not worship the nature things. Oh, my husband now, because my husband, my wife, my children... Sometimes it even it becomes a difficult thing to make a decision in a family because we are here as a family. Joy says, this is what I want. Then Matt says, no. And the mother says, well, what dad says is okay. And I am here. I want to make everybody happy. But it's not about that. When it comes to worshiping God, it's not about what decision or what opinion you have. The only opinion, we have only one opinion. Worship, worshiping the Lord. Amen. Worshiping the Lord. And therefore, we will be the children of God. There is a difference. The kingdom of God is consists of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the children. 
Not with the people of God, but the children of God. There is a difference between the people of God and children of God. People of God is everybody who was created. Even those who say there is no God, they belong to God because he created them. Children of God is those who have repented their sins and they are members of the kingdom. They have repented their sins, they have accepted Jesus as their savior, and they walk that life of salvation. Those are the children of God. The kingdom of God is only a reality. Those who love the Lord, those who are no God, shall always be rejoicing. But remember, we are not members of this world. We are passers by. It's only that time has not come to say bye bye. And then one by one we will be saying bye bye to this world. And when Jesus comes, the Bible says there are some of us who will not taste death. And I know everybody would love to be there. But it's not possible. Everybody would just want to live until this day that Jesus will come and we all see him and see the judgment day. But we don't know when he is coming. We have no time to waste. Do whatever we are doing in the Lord. Praising God and having the mind of the eternity. Always Repent. Always show love. Always do the right thing. Go the right way. Walk with Jesus. And that way the Lord will be praised. Paul is speaking to us this morning. The word of God is reminding us. We are not different from the current people. We are still, we still need this word of God. We still need this word. We need to hear that. That time is not on our side. Let us not be on one thing forever. Let's say this prayer and as we say this prayer let's go to the Lord and take these words to be yours Jesus I don't know when he was turning so prepare me right now my mindset will be alive and my life will be and different I will harm myself with faith and love because I am alive. I will process every decision through the rest of salvation. My soul is I will build a personal culture that is with you. Attentive and filled with gratitude. My spiritual senses will be sharp. I refuse to lie down and let life pass me by. I take advantage of every opportunity to expand your kingdom. You have appointed me to live work and process. I will do it and I will also encourage others to do it as well in Jesus' name. Amen.